So today's episode is a really fantastic episode because in our presence, in our midst today, we have a professional who has been working on video games and movies for about 12 years now. So in today's video, he's going to be taking us through his process on developing characters and a few tips or tricks we can use when we're drawing characters so we can push their personality, make our characters more readable, more lifelike, and make them feel like they belong in the world. So today, our amazing guest is Marco Nilo. If you don't know him, he's been working in concept art and film for about 12 years now. I actually stumbled on his work back way back in 2009, also on the conceptart.org forum it was really popular back then. And I used to watch a lot of his live streams where he would just uh, paint online and everyone would just watch and follow and leave comments and all that. Leave comments down below. Tell him, whoa, it's amazing to watch you. Yeah, speaking of that, you guys should leave comments down below. Maybe you can link your Instagram handle. I just go up uh, to your profile. I just see your work, probably leave a few likes, share your art on my story. It's something that I'm doing nowadays. So just leave a comment down below with your Instagram handle and I'll share your art on my story. Give you a few shout outs and all that. Maybe you might be in the next video, who knows? So Marco did a lot of work on the Black Panther movie that came out. He designed uh, some of the characters, the character, and he also works on the Mortal Kombat games that have been releasing on the PlayStation and any other console you play on PC as well. He did a lot of the character designs on that video game and it's really, really amazing. Those, his Sonya especially is always in my head, but all the other ones are really, really good too. So you should check them out. I know you've probably played Mortal Kombat, but yeah, you should check them out if you haven't. So today we have him in our midst and he's going to tell us how to improve our characters. So right now I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm talking with Marco Nilo. I was watching your videos in 2009. It's it's an honor to be to be having this conversation with you. Yeah, of course, man. It's uh, it's cool to see you grow too, man. You've gone <laughs> so much. When you first started your YouTube channel, I was watching that. <laughs> And uh, seeing the growth has been crazy. It's like proof that um, you know if you if you just keep going, it'll happen, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I say the number one sort of uh, tip that I have for that is observation. It's all about um, observing the things that are happening around you and um, constantly taking note of the things that you like, uh, paying attention to uh, the people that you have around you, paying attention to. Uh, not just your specific group of friends, but everyone, right? Learning how to take a character from your life and put it into your work. For example, um, we all have a specific type of character that we fall back on and we that's easy for us to... Yeah, to yeah, yeah. You know, characters, uh, for the most part, this character is us in a way, and we can change the knob a little bit and tweak the knobs to sort of get um, to sort of get a character one way or, or another uh, but every time it's going to basically be us until you kind of learn to notice the things that you see while you're out walking or things that you see while you're at a bar or interesting conversations you have with this person or your boss from work or any of these characters that sort of fit into the role of, of a specific uh, movie or film or a game that you're working on. Um, I think that's the number one step, observation. Um, paying attention to people around you, paying attention to things you see, paying attention mm -hmm. to even designs and stuff on games and, and movies um, will actually really, really help you um, mm -hmm. kind of figure this out. Um, and then from there, it's uh, I actually carry a sketchbook in my back pocket, or I used to in my formative years, as much. I carried a sketchbook in my back pocket, and I was always jotting a quick clothing design down or something, or just the look of a character or a person that I found interesting uh, that I encountered out in in the wild. I, I'll say, uh, just you know, just out and about, yeah. thinking of character or people that I've seen, thinking of situations that I've seen, and just kind of replaying them in my head. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So that's like you're always pulling from you're, you're pulling from a reference, a visual library that you built 
just from taking studies and observations of like people you've seen outside from movies and all that so you really have to take in as much information as you can before you are able to just put that out onto a blank canvas right 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 yeah it's almost like if you want to be a good character designer or if you want to be a good character guy you kind of have to to be a good observer at least of something right you don't have to notice or pay attention to everything but you do have to have a more a heightened sense of that than most people do, I think. Or not, not like be better than most people, but you have to be paying attention. I think typically, for example, like when I'm out with friends, there's a certain group of friends that are just talking and enjoying things, but uh, there's also a certain group of friends, myself included, that fall into this category. That when people are talking, I might seem to not be listening, I guess, but I'm actually like looking at the whole picture uh, of the person from top to bottom and really taking in the surrounding and taking in the scenes. It's a different type of awareness that you have to develop uh, and record and then spit out through your, your work. Uh, especially when it comes to designing characters, like for uh, when I worked on Mortal Kombat, for example, those characters that I was creating for that franchise was basically a conglomeration of everything that I liked over the past 20 years. Uh, some characters that I may have taken my um some characters i may have pulled from like old video games or or old cartoons that i used to watch or you know old comics that i used to watch it's all constantly going in and then you spit it out onto a character i was actually about to ask you like the the mindset you had when you were creating those characters for mortal kombat and that's exactly what you're saying right now which mm -hmm. makes sense so it's it's really just taking in a lot of reference, build, really building in that visual library so you're able to just fall back and pull on it whenever you need it for a job or anything. So, uh, what kind of studies, what kind of exercises would you have someone that's trying to develop a good sense of character design? What kind of exercise would you have him do? Um, one of the things that's helped me the most, again, is it getting a sketchbook that fits in your back pocket. Ironically, it's a lot of sketchbooks that will actually fit in your back pocket. I, I don't think I've ever had a tr had trouble on trying to have these books around here sitting down so I can show you. Um, typically, I tend to use those mole skins, which are about, you know, like this big. Mm -hmm. They'll actually fit in your back pocket. And people always ask, why do you have a sketchbook in your back pocket? Um, but for example, uh, like let's say I'm out at a marketplace and I see a person who comes by who has a really, really cool silhouette or they're wearing something that's really nice. Well, a good exercise would be just to pop out the sketchbook really quick and try to capture the silhouette of the person and just like some quick visual cues about what may stand out in your mind because sometimes you'll see stuff and you won't, sometimes you don't remember to remember. So it's good to have a sketchbook on hand, unless you want to just like snap a picture of someone. I guess you can snap pictures of people now since we're in this new yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but I think the better exercise would be to literally draw it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. And then uh, would you have the person do, say, figure drawings? I, I see you do a lot of figure drawings from life and all that. Does that help in a particular way? to build your anatomy of head? Yes, uh, and it's a thing that I'm trying to do more of. I, I slacked off on it a good deal um, over the years, and every time I, I feel like I need to get back into it. I don't think it's required, but it is good to... I think with things like figure drawing, all I'm trying to do, my purpose in figure drawing is to try to work on my muscle of discipline, mm, okay. which is also required to be a good concept artist is you have to have a lot of discipline to be able to like tune things out and really focus on the task at hand. So uh, the reason why I go to figure drawing is one, to learn, learn anatomy, mm -hmm. which is the basis of all good figure, or the basis of all good character art is knowing anatomy. Um, yeah. And two, to work on my discipline. I actually teach students a lot and uh, I teach them concept art. Um, mm -hmm. But most weeks I'm usually just correcting their anatomy. And they kind of get frustrated, like, why are you correcting my anatomy? I can't even learn concept art. But when you're doing character concept art, anatomy plays such a big role in it because you need to be able to tweak different knots on that anatomy to get the overall feeling of the character, right? Let's say if you have the Incredible Hulk, 
and he was the same size as Thor. Well, yeah. he's no longer the Incredible Hulk, yeah, right? Yeah, like we won't not, feel that mass, yeah. Right, so you have to be able to draw a figure in mind to be able to expand and contract certain things and know what creates a certain look, what creates a villain, what creates a, a hero, what creates all these different looks um, in order to be able to get the best overall piece. So yeah, figure drawing does help that a lot, especially if you're a new artist. Um, it's one of those things that kind of drills good fundamentals into your head. Um, it, it drills in fundamentals through repetition, constantly going and seeing the figure move and change and seeing little poses that the figure draw, the figure model does and stuff like that can really, really influence it. So I say the two go hand in hand. You don't have to have figure drawing to be a good concept artist or a good character concept artist, but I think that doing it, doing one will make the other better and vice versa, actually. Would you suggest, say, for a person to study a lot of facial expressions for when you're building an expression sheet or would you just say for the person to just build his visual library and just nail that anatomy are expressions really that important you know this that's an interesting question man um i think it's changing and i'm trying i'm in the middle of trying to figure that out myself but it used to be a good concept artist only had to draw a character like this Super stiff, front view, side view, and then like back view, right? Yeah. But I find that the people who work like that are becoming less and less of my favorite. And the people who I constantly am looking at that are constantly attracting my attention are people or seem to be people who have the expressions that I do know that in a character concept art, I was taught that if you spend 30 hours on the character, maybe 20 of those hours are actually going to be on the face, getting an interesting face that tells the overall mood. A person who's really good at that, if you look at uh, a lot of Brian Meyerbeek's old work, yeah. um, we, we had some work on, I think, it wasn't Dungeons and Dragons, it's like an old game. It may have been Dungeons and Dragons. It's, it's, it's an old game he worked on. It was like a dungeon crawler. Even, I think it came out in like 2001 or maybe 1999. And his work even back then was like insane because you see, the first time you see like the wizard, he's like casting a spell. When you look at the face, and he's like, like he's got this like cool expression. Where you just there. know that character. You know, you have a friend who is that character. You're like, oh, that dude is my friend who's always staying out late and drinking too much and then showing up <laughs> late to work in the morning. And he just happens to also be a wizard because he's like real snazzy and like good at casting spells and stuff, right? Yeah. You get all of that from just the facial expression. So, I don't think it's necessarily necessary to do good expressions, but I do think if you want to learn them and learn how to do them, I'm also in the process of doing that. My, I think my expressions are terrible for the most part, but I think that there's a lot of power in that. Um, and a good a good way to test that is you can take a character design from just the head to like mid torso with a good face and know what that character is, if the expression yeah. is good. Yeah. And vice versa, if it's a bad expression and you just take the top torso, it's not really going to inform the character too much. Um, I think that's a lot of, also a lot of the reason why I think the animators are kind of running the whole industry right now. Like, when I'm looking at work that I really enjoy, it's usually from an animator because they get that expression very, very well. Uh, but expression in the face doesn't just stop at the face, it goes throughout the whole body, which is again why it is important for uh, character concept level. Yeah, you yeah. have to nail the poise of the character to express right. the essence of the character with just posing and all that. Right, because pose is also an yeah. expression, or you can express how this person's shoulders look like. Does he have big, round, meaty shoulders, yeah. or does he have bony kind of shoulders yeah, that yeah. fall off of his frame, or does he have, you know, proud shoulders? You know, yeah. all of this stuff, little things, that's all expression. Yeah, that makes sense. So one thing you should keep in mind is most of these tips he just shared with us really won't work unless you're really putting in the work, putting in the hours, and trying to improve in your art. So try and get a little small sketchbook you can keep around you just have it somewhere close by where you can always draw characters wherever you're walking around or someone that you see across the road that has an interesting silhouette or an interesting physique or he has a really nice costume so you just take out your time and sketch that just 
make sure you're putting a lot of hours into drawing a lot of all these figures that will really help you when you're trying to draw a character and convey the essence of a character and always pay attention to the things the people that are in your immediate surroundings because those are the people you're going to pull from when you're trying to create characters in your spare time that's all i have for you today i hope you learned something from this video so hit that like button share the video with a friend make sure you share it with a friend so other people can just learn from marco nila and then you subscribe to my channel if you haven't and by this point i think you should have subscribed to my channel by now i mean if you haven't what else are you doing huh now really think about it Go ahead, subscribe. I'm waiting. I'm um, just here, just chilling. Probably play a couple of games or two while you're while I'm waiting for you to subscribe. Are you done? You're done, huh? Ah, okay. All right. I'll see you in the next video. All right. Thumbs up. Peace.